So hello everyone. My name is Sean Taylor, Field Application Scientist for BioRad Canada. And I am here today to talk to you about uh, the latest release of our, soft, of our imaging software platform called ImageLab 4.1. This software drives the majority of the imaging technologies from BioRad, including our uh, ChemiDoc MP, our GelDoc XR, and our GelDoc EZ instruments. All of these instruments are designed to image uh, gels and blots in basic research labs. And I'm going to focus on the ChemiDoc MP, which is our basically all-in-one instrument, covers probably 99.9% .9 of all basic research lab imaging applications for gels and blots, um, including fluorescent blots, chemiluminescent blots, along with any kind of uh, stained or visible gel, even film, you could scan with this instrument. So um, let's get right to it. Um, when you open ImageLab software and you're connected to an instrument, uh, and I'm going to focus on, um, on the very simple uh, setup of the technology, uh, you can click on new multi-channel application. I'm going to focus on the single channel applications in another video, but let's focus on the easiest uh, way to access data quickly with the, with the software. So new multi-channel. And what you can do here is you can, you can uh, set it up for different acquisition settings. So you can set it up for um, lane and band detection. And you can also set it up for molecular weight analysis. So it will automatically detect lanes and bands. And I typically set it for more prominent bands, just the default. But what we have now in the software is a new normalization channel. So you can actually look for um, an image that has your loading control on the blot itself. And this would be for, uh, for what I'm going to talk about here would be multi-fluorescent blot where you would have uh, either a chemiluminescent antibody, uh, so a primary antibody, um, that would be uh, used under chemiluminescent detection. And then another, another antibody which you would label with a um, fluorescent antibody for your loading control. So on the same blot, you could detect both your target protein and your loading control uh, protein. There's another application which I'm going to present here, which would be to look at um, also the total protein lanes as well, so uh, where you could look at the, um, the entire um, lane of proteins that were transferred on the blot, and that's using our stain-free technology. So this is what I'm going to focus on, to, on in this video, and then I'll show you other flavors of how you can do things uh, in subsequent videos. So in the normalization channel, you could select uh, for normalization, and then you could also do molecular weight analysis automatically with this, okay? So what you want to do in gel imaging, first of all, is you'd want to configure your different channels, okay? We can, you can do up to three different channels with the, with the imaging system, <coughs> and you just configure them. So here we can click configure, you select application, click on blots, and then you can select from a variety of applications. As you can see here, we can select chemi for your typical ECL-based chemistries. Um, you can select colorimetric if you're doing, um, let's say, a ponso stained and you want to you want to image the gel for total protein load. Also, stain-free. Now, this is a, this is a new technology from BioRad exclusively where our, our protein gels, we sell precast gels that are um, embedded with what's called our stain-free dye. And that dye fluoresces. So basically, after running a gel with uh, a protein gel on these, on, on these uh, precast gels, you can put them into, into our imaging system and, and visualize the total proteins on the gel. What's really cool about this technology is that it also it also allows you to transfer those um, those, those pre-stained proteins onto your membrane. So the, so the stain in the gel does transfer with the total proteins onto a blot, and then what you can do is you can actually image <coughs> the transferred blot 
um, for the total proteins that have transferred. So you can actually assess the quality of transfer and you could use the total proteins transferred onto the blot as a means of normalization. So that's another option to, to use uh, for, for, this, for this imaging system. And I'm going to show you this now, actually. So let's assume that we were working with uh, fluorescent secondary antibodies. And we used um, a primary antibody to our target protein that was derived from mouse, let's say. So we, we purchased a goat um, anti-mouse secondary antibody conjugated to an Alexa dye, Alexa 48, let's say. So we click on that. We're using the Alexa 48 secondary. And the software will automatically expose for 10 spans. Remember, this is a fluorescent applic application, so the software will, will continue collecting light from the blot until you've, until the imager has reached the limit of detection of the camera, and then it will stop the exposure. So that way you're getting the broadest uh, dynamic range, the, the highest signal to noise that the, that the imaging system can give you for, for each of these uh, fluorescent types of applications. So we click OK. So now this is going to be Alexa 48. In channel 2, Let's say, our, um, let's say we're looking at another protein on the same blot. And again, we've, we've used a, a, a primary antibody. This time, the primary not derived in, in um, mouse, but derived from rabbit, let's say. So there are so there's two different uh, um, species of, of primaries. And we have purchased an Alexa 546, a goat anti-rabbit now, Alexa 546. That way we're not going to get cross-reactivity of the secondaries. So we choose that one for the second protein that we want to do on the blot. So you can see that what we're doing here by using fluorescent antibodies is we're avoiding having to strip and reprobe a blot. So there we go. In the third channel, <coughs> we're going to look at the stain free. And if you notice this list is getting smaller and smaller, it's because we've selected, as we select different um, types of antibodies uh, for the secondary, the list gets smaller because you've already used them. So, so we're not showing them again, so you can't make the mistake of re-choosing um, an antibody. So let's choose the stain free. So there we go. So now we, we're going to probe on the same blot in the imager. So we're not going to move the blot. You put the blot inside the imager. We're going to, and the imager will automatically look for Alexa 48, Alexa 546, and then it's going to look for the, for the total proteins transferred on the blot by the fluorescence of the stain-free dye that was transferred on the blot when we, when we, um, when we, um, because we incubated the, uh, because we ran the gel on uh, the criterion stain-free uh, gels. So next step after you've done this is you position the gel or blot. So here's the, the blot. Now, of course, you wouldn't see the bands as we're seeing them here. This is a, this is a fake image of, of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a blot um, just to show you what you would do. So we, we put the blot in the instrument. We, the camera is, is showing us what we're able to see. And then you can zoom in or out with the slider bar. When you zoom, the focus is always in focus with our imaging system. So you don't have to adjust focus or iris or any of these other things that you would ha otherwise have to do in other imaging systems. It's literally just the slider bar to just adjust the zoom appropriately for the image. Then you run the protocol. It's as simple as that. So we've, we're running it for all three applications, as you can see. And <clears throat> because we detected, we, we detected the, the, uh, the, the lanes automatically, and because we clicked to detect the molecular weight standard, and we told it that the molecular weight was in the first lane, the marker was in the first lane, it automatically detected the lanes and the standards in these blocks. So you can see we've detected the bands for everything and uh, for all the blocks, and then we have the overlay image for Alexa 546, Alexa 48, and then the blue is the stain free. So we have all our data already collected. And this actually works quite well if you have these kinds of, uh, of, of, um, of blots um, 
on uh, in the imaging system. So, but what what I want to show you, what I want to focus in on here is the normalization. So, so if I if I um, increase the size, I'm just going to click off the protocol uh, window now, and I'm going to increase the size of this image here so we can see more easily what's going on. So this was the Alexa 546 bands on the blot. This was the Alexa 48 bands, and this was the stain-free transferred for total protein. So you can see there are differences between the lanes, slight differences, and then the overlaid images here. If I go now to the normalization tool, okay, so we've already detected everything, so really our data is all done, but I want to go to the normalization tool. And what we can do here is we can tell it which channel is um, contains the, the, the bands that we want to normalize to. Now, in this case, I'm going to pick stain-free, just for fun, okay? But you could pick any of them. So, Lexus 48, Lexus 546, or stain-free. But if I click on stain-free, then what we're going to be normalizing to are the total protein lane, okay? Now, how is it doing this? So, I'm going to show you here. If I click on this button here, which is switch to 3D view, so what, this, what, what you're seeing now is a three-dimensional view of the blot, okay, or the gel. And these are the proteins that are transferred. So you can see the proteins are, are coming out of the background as peaks, okay? I'm hoping that you're sort of getting the picture. So these, are, these, are, these mountains or jagged peaks here are actually the bands that the instrument sees. So it, so it has a very um, advanced algorithm of uh, actually the algorithm for detecting, for detecting lanes and bands and quantifying density is very sophisticated in the software. And it, it takes into account all the entire width of the band and, sorry, well, um, length or width, whatever you want to call the lane width, and also the area under these peaks. So, and it calculates the full volume of each of these peaks as bands. And even if the bands are very close together, it's able to determine where peaks begin and end and how to calculate the density under these peaks. And it does this pretty much automatically. It does a really good job of doing this. So, so you can see it's, it's taking into account, when you do total lane normalization, it's looking at everything, now these are the markers, it's looking at everything underneath from the background would be all of this from here to here. It subtracts that background and takes everything that comes above the background and subtracts that total density uh, from the entire lane. Um, uh, so it takes the density from that entire lane and then uses that to normalize. Okay, so that's what so that's what it's doing when you when you choose total lane. All right, so I'm just going to switch back to uh, to the normal view here. So it's not using just the the bands that it's that it's found in the automatic detection of bands. It's using everything that's come above the background. So even these faint bands, these faint uh, densities that are coming up above the background are being are being used for normalization. All right, so. Now that I've selected stain three and I've told it to use the total protein lane, what it's going to do is it's going to take this lane and it's going to consider this lane as the, the first lane after the molecular weight marker is the lane that it chooses as the normalization lane. So, so it's, going to, it's going to normalize this lane to itself and then every other lane will be divided by the total density. So the total density of the, of the, of the, of the, uh, of the of this lane will be normalized to this lane. The total density of lane four will be normalized to lane two, and so on and so forth. So all of these will be this will be the normalization lane that it chooses. If you don't have a molecular weight marker, it will choose the first lane that it finds and use that as the normalization lane if you haven't selected a molecular weight marker. Okay, so how does the data look? Click on analysis table. And here's the data. So very nice. Uh, we've got our molecular weight. So this is lane one with, with the various uh, um, bands that were detected in lane one. And then here is lane two. So 
This lane one, as you can see, has no sort of normalization or anything in here. There's no normalization factor because it knows that that's the molecular weight lane. Lane two is normalized to itself, as I explained to you. So it's all normalized to itself. And basically, it adds up the entire density, not just from the bands it finds, but from uh, the bands that were selected, but from all of the peaks that came out of the blot, either, either detected or, or, or not selected. And it adds up the total density and then divides it by itself. So you have a normalization factor. And then what happens is each of these, uh, each of these densities that are taken for the bands, which are volumes, volumes under those three-dimensional peaks that I showed you, background subtracted volumes, are multiplied by the normalization factor to give you the normalized volume, the normalized volume under the peak. So here, in this case, we multiplied in lane 3 1.273 times each of these volumes to give you the final normalized volume. So this, so clearly lane 3, the total, the total lane in density was slightly less than lane 2. So therefore, we have to multiply uh, lane 3 by 1.273 to get the equivalent intensity of lane 2. Okay? and so on and so forth. So all of these different lanes, lane 4, is almost two times less intense on the total lane than lane 2. And therefore, we're multiplying all of the volumes by this factor to give, to give these results here, okay, for each of, the, for each of the, the bands detected. So of course, the bands of interest are the, are the, are the two that are on the blot, okay, so th that's why these ones are the ones that are of interest, and, and we can see that actually the bands are pretty equivalent as we go down the blot, but, but uh, that's just the case for this, for this particular information. All this data can easily, so the, we're not really very interested in the stain-free information because that's just the total protein. The, the information we're interested in are target proteins on the blot, which are the Alexa 48 and the Alexa 546 bands. This table can easily be exported to Excel. Very simple process. You can copy to clipboard, and then you just open Excel and paste the data. And the data is all in numeric format, pasted as a table, and you can access it as you wish. So now we finally have normalized information for the uh, volumes or densities uh, of those bands, which is very nice.